All right, welcome back up to uh, part nine. I uh, kind of got the feeling this was going to be a long series of videos because uh, I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time down here, and, and you'll see why in the video. But uh, I got a couple days down here, and uh, I feel I got pretty far. Um, I think next week I probably will have all this railroad stuff done, you know, the cars and stuff like that. So uh, instead of me sitting here talking, let's get around and show you where I'm at and what I'm up to. All right, so here we are. We're back. Uh, it's Tuesday. Now my primer finally showed up Friday and it came in the mail and I, my mail comes late. So it got here late Friday and I just didn't feel like coming down here and doing anything. Saturday we had a wedding to go to, Sunday a bunch of guys came over and we took down a big old tree in the backyard. And then yesterday was the holiday, Memorial Day, and we had a big cookout to go to. So here it is Tuesday. So about a week and a half has gone by with me doing nothing. All right, so like I said, my primer's here, and I got another bottle of this airbrush uh, thinner. And the first thing I done was shake this up real good. And uh, I wanted to get it out of this bottle and into one of these little bottles. So it would be easier for me to uh, get this into my airbrush. Uh, so I got a little bottle of, the, of this primer and a little bottle of the uh, airbrush thinner. Just opening this bottle up, I got it on this thumb, I got it on this thumb. Uh, yeah, so that's why I transferred it over to another bottle. Now the nice thing about this, uh, where I get this from, the Scale Hobbyist, um, they got a little bit of information on, on the primer itself and all the paints really. Uh, most of the other websites you go to, they'll just show you the product and you buy it or you don't buy it. But this here, uh, Scale Hobbyist, uh, they give you a little paint chip color of what it looks like. And which, like I said, you can't, you can't tell nothing from that. And then they, they tell you a little bit about it. Now this one here says it can be, uh, this primer can be applied directly without diluting with an airbrush or a brush. All right, and tells you a few more things about it. Now, I talked about this last time, these paint chips. It says here, due to the differences in monitor calibration and operating system gamma settings, we cannot guarantee the accuracy of any paint image or color as it is displayed on your monitor. So there you go, exactly what I was saying. You can't tell much from them. And here's why. Here's the German field gray. There's the color chip. Uh, that does look like it's got some gray in it, but when you put put it up against what it really looks like, <laughs> yeah, it's close, you know. But I would have never thought it would have been come this this green. Okay, so that's what I say about these paint chips. You can't go by them. All right, so getting set up here, and I want to show you what I do. All right. Now, here, here's a prime example, nice big part, and I've been handling this quite a bit. 
uh, putting it together, putting all these uh, little pieces in there and these steps on there. So I've been handling this quite a bit. Now your hand has a tendency to sweat or you, you rub your face and you get oils on your fingers and then you're touching your part and you're transferring all that stuff over to your part. So what I like to do right before I paint is I'll put on one of these uh, plastic gloves alright so for now on handling this part I will have this plastic glove on alright then I'll take a piece of paper towel alright fold this up a little bit it's way too big and uh, I'll take some alcohol all right now I got mine is 70 percent doesn't matter 70 percent 99 percent or whatever and what I like to do is, is get some on this rag just get it wet and this dries so fast so you don't have nothing to worry about and I would have this plastic glove on right now but just for showing you so I'm gonna do it like this and I'll just take this and wipe this part down okay and what that's gonna do is get off any of them oils or anything that you might have transferred over from your hands onto these parts alright so just wipe it down generally pretty good doesn't have to be perfect just you want to get off whatever you might think might be on there all right okay now that part's ready to be painted now the wheels I probably won't do them because you know I don't think it's worth it uh, and they're gonna be underneath hidden so if I get any blemishes what what you're trying to avoid is things like what they call fish eye and fish eye will come it, it'll be a bunch of little dots in it uh, a lot of times you'll get that if you've got any kind of silicone around anywhere. If you were using that on the other side of the room, that stuff floats through the air and that silicone gets on there, your, your paint job is going to be ruined. So there is no silicone in this basement. Uh, I very seldom ever buy anything with silicone in it anyway. Alright, and uh, this part would be pretty much prepped, ready to go. And I'll just put a clip on it and there I go I can take it over to the uh, my air booth and start spraying it all right now like I said this stuff here says it doesn't need to be thin but I probably will thin it down I'll probably put a few drops of, of thinner in there um, it does look a little a little thick too much too thick for me really you know I, like I said I, this is really my first time at using an airbrush so don't you know there's plenty of other guys out there that have been doing this for years you want to learn you, you probably have to go watch them but I'm just showing you what I'm doing and anybody that's watched my shows or know anything about me years ago I was laid off in the trucking industry and I, I used to work in body shops so spraying these parts is no different than me being in the body shop spraying cars and working on cars this is just on a much smaller scale that's the way I look at it alright so the principles are the same get your paint put a little thinner in it uh, put it in your airbrush and get your air setting halfway decent you know you gotta mess with that and then just go ahead and start spraying parts and seeing what she comes out like. If you need a little more thinner, add a little more thinner. If you need a little more air, add some more air. But uh, really, it's, it's, it's simple. It, it's just the same thing I did when I was in the body shop. All right, so I will be wearing a little respirator. I had some of these out in the garage, so I thought, well, I'll bring them down. Not that I really need them because this little air booth, it, it sucks it out pretty good. But I'll go ahead and I'll play it safe. I'll put this on. Uh, and now, uh, one of the things that I was told on the internet that I was watching, uh, I was watching a guy on the internet, I forget who it was, it might have been Bobby Walters from Genesis Models. And 
one of the tips he gave, now I never did this in the body shop because in the body shop you didn't have to worry about this because of the way your spray gun was set up. But with this, uh, they recommend you put in your thinner first because it will get down in there right to where it's got to go out at the needle and that will be the first thing that will come out is the thinner. If you pour this paint in there first and then pour your thinner in and you mix it up you might not be able to get down in there and the first thing going to come out is some heavy paint. So they suggest that you put in your thinner first and then put in your paint and then mix it up from there and I'll be using a little little paintbrush right here to get down in here and mix this up all right and I'll probably even put my finger over the edge and let it bubble up and, and mix it a little bit that way too all right so I think that's about it uh, I've got to get my parts laid out here and know what I'm doing got to think about what I'm doing because like this one right here this gets primered inside here and all of this will get primer. Uh, yeah, and I think I'm going to primer this out here because like that's where I filled in that seam line and I want to see how it looks. So I'll probably be primering this too. Um, on these parts, the whole thing will be prim primer and paint it. Uh, let me see here. What is it? These here. See, this is what I'm talking about, how you got to plan this out. I'm just going to primer the inside of these, okay? This will be the inside part of this. I'll just do the inside of this, primering it and painting it. And then when I come along and put this onto that other part, I'm going to have to do some seam work here. So that's why I'm not going to paint or primer the outside of this just yet. So I got to I got to take into consideration what what I got a primer, how I got to primer it and paint it, and uh, things like that. I think I'll go ahead and do these all these little boxes that go on here too. I'll get them all primered up. All right, so uh, let me get set up here and get ready to start priming. I'm gonna start with the wheels, get them primered first. See how we're doing get all my practice in and all that on them wheels and then I can come along to these other bigger parts. Alright, so let me get things wiped down with this alcohol and uh, I'll be ready to go. Alright, so here's my wheels I'm doing and these are some of the ones that I painted with that other gray primer. Uh, like that. I'll do one more. nice okay no use in sitting here and you watching me doing 40 sets of wheels so when I get to one of them bigger parts I'll be back all right um, here's a, uh, a bigger part I'm gonna go ahead and primer one of these bridges 
Uh, I've had to take and uh, clean the tip out about all every time I, I go ahead and fill it back up. And what I've been doing is coming up uh, about a, a little over halfway, almost three quarters of the way with paint. And I know I said that I should put the, the thinner in first, but I've been getting the paint in there because it's almost ready to spray. And I've been putting about about 15 drops of this thinner in there and it's coming out pretty good uh, I take my little brush here and, and stir it up so I got a, about three quarters of a cup in there now these are the hardest little things to paint because I gotta I gotta look at it every which way I can so I can get in between these uh, areas in here so I'll paint it this way paint it this way this way and then same way on the bottom because I got to get inside of there so let me show you what I'm doing here I got a little piece of cardboard laying in here that I can before I start spraying I'll, I'll hit that cardboard first alright so I'm starting on the inside I'm trying to get all of this covered I'm trying to hit them ribs from the side. Now I can't I can't quite get over on this one because he's side of this model is in the way. Now, I'll turn it over and attack these ribs from up on the top. got a habit here pulling this out closer to me instead of staying inside this boot. Alright, now you can see I pretty much got it from this angle. Now I got to get it from this angle. Now from this angle, and 
one more time from this side. Now I gotta take a good look at it. Make sure I got in between them beams. Spot right there, little one right there. All right, now do the sides. You gotta hit it from every angle you can think of. Let me tell you something too, this, you know, since I'm hitting it so much, in some places it goes on pretty thick, but this stuff really flows out nice. I'll show you one in a minute here. Just looking for anything I might have missed right here. A little tough getting into some of these little corners. Just got to keep rotating it and looking. Now that looks real wet, you know, because I've been putting it on kind of heavy. But let me show you here. Let me get one of these. This one here was the first one. And it's kind of hard to say. It was the first one of these that I did. Okay. Got it on the inside and that. Well, when I was going along this outside, boy, I hit it really heavy, and it was it was close to a run, all right? So I thought, well, I'm just going to have to let this one sit. I'll come back and sand it down a little bit. Well, when I come back and looked at it, it flowed out. It just, it, it just really settled down really nice. I really like this primer. Spraying it from the gun. And this is one of the ones that had a seam right there where these where these other ones will go on here on the side. There's, there was a seam there that I filled in. It's damn near invisible. And I think once I get the paint on it, you won't see it. All right. So I got a couple other little pieces to do, and then I'll show you my end result here. I got a, that piece of styrofoam that I said I found in the backyard a, a few weeks ago that has worked out handy. I'll show you that in just a minute. Let me finish up primering and I'll show you where I'm at. Okay, there's everything primered to the point that I wanted to get to. Uh, like these parts here, they're not primered up here yet because I've got to assemble these yet. And when I get them assembled, then I can start in all the wheels on there. You can see all the wheels are all the way around. Once I get them assembled with the wheels, then I can go through a bunch of these parts, a bunch of little parts and the, uh, the parts for the couplings that go on the front of a couple of those cars, I think four of them, get the railroad coupling. So once I get these together with the wheels, like I said, then I, I'll pretty much knock all this out. Everything will be primered. Uh, I'm going to let all this set for about a day. 
a good day, maybe two. And then I'll come back and everything you see primer is going to get paint on it. Okay? So that'll be my next step. Now I had one major breakdown uh, using this, this airbrush. Um, it just quits spraying all together. And now I know they tell you you got to clean out the tip every once in a while. So I was doing that. I was, you know, every so often I'd take off this end here and uh, clean, clean this out a little bit and clean that tip out. And I put it back together and I still couldn't get it to spray. And what it was doing, it was uh, bubbling up inside. So that tells me, well, no, no air was even getting through. So I, I stripped it down, tore it all apart, cleaned it all up to what I thought was satisfactory. I was messing with, more concerned about cleaning the needle than anything else, and I still couldn't get it to spray. So what was happening was this right here, there's two pieces right here. See if I'm in view two pieces right here and this one here I had to get down in there super super good and clean that I, uh, I've been using the alcohol to clean it with it works real good the uh, isopropyl alcohol right there and that's what I've been using to clean the parts with uh, of my airbrush and I had to get in there and super clean this because that's what was happening. This was jammed up with some paint and stuff in there and it wasn't letting the air get through. Wasn't letting nothing get, nothing get through. So once I did that and assembled this back together and then put it back on my brush and I was back in business. So yeah, you, you know, you got to constantly take this apart and clean this tip as you're going along every so often. So that's where I'm at. Uh, everything worked out. It took me a couple hours to do all this. But uh, yeah, it, it turned out pretty nice. You know, it, like I said, there was a couple places where I really got it on there heavy and I just let it set and it all flowed out. It, it, it's looking good. So, like I said, a day or two, and I'll be back, and we'll be painting, painting all this that you see primer. You know, I'll get all this, because i got to get the insides of this painted, so I can get my wheels in here and assemble this other side. And then once I do that, then I can put a couple little parts on here that go on here, and uh, get it all painted up as a unit on the outside of it. But the inside has to get done first. All right, that's it for this one. Well, there she is. She went to the groomers. And is she turning gray or what? She was jet black when we got her. Look at the gray in her. Come here, Molly. Show them your bows. Stuck these little bows in her head. Come here, girl. Come here. Look at this. Look at Look at that. You don't do that to a dog. No, you don't do that. Where are you at? You don't do that to a dog. Look how skinny she looks. All right, let me get over here to the model. All right, so here we are. Um, I, you can see I got my little cart, uh, railroad cars all together. I got all the wheels in there and they are spinning right right for now temporarily um, I left this side blank because I gotta putty the seam line here get that done and then I can primer the rest of this and get the whole thing painted but the inside right now is all painted and uh, ready to go all I have to do is uh, work on this outside here on this and I know when I go to primer, I'm going to get some of that primer around, but when I go to paint, I'll make sure I get everything covered. 
but the cars I, I got part of the uh, coupling together I don't want to put too much on there because I got to be handling this thing yet and there's some small parts go on here yet but uh, it's getting there so all those cars are together and then here's the other one set uh, the different side uh, the back side of it um, I'll show you what it looks like here in a second I got all this together got a, you know like I said putty that seam line got that like that got a bunch of little parts going on uh, on this outside like these little stars I got two got to go on that side but I can't put them on until I putty and seam get that seam line fixed and I got some other little pieces going on here but they're too fragile to put on there right now all right now, I didn't paint these because I wanted to get these railings on here okay so I got all the railings on okay and let me tell you something you talk about something that's fragile my god I, I did break one you know but I managed to get it back together but you talk about you know when you cut these off of the sprue you got to get them little nibs off of there and you talk about <laughs> I mean I was just barely having to sand it because I was afraid I was going to break them you talk about something fragile but I got them all on and uh, so these are pretty much finished except for the photo etch and I don't want to put that photo etch on because the next thing I'm going to do here is primer all these rails and then I will paint it because I got to get this painted first and then I'll put that photo etch down in there. Let me get one here. Let's see how it goes. It goes down in there like this. Okay, so then I'll... I think what I'm going to do here is I'll go ahead and uh, after I get this, this thing all painted up, I'll go ahead and primer and paint the bottom side of this and leave the top blank until I get it on there and then I'll paint it okay because I like I said I got to get down inside of every one of these I got to make sure I get this all painted real good because you have to hit it like I showed you before at every angle so I don't want to have that photo etch on there and trying to do that so that photo etch will go on later but here's what one of them looks like assembled right there you can see that that's how she goes together and I don't think I'm gonna glue these these uh, bridges onto there I think I'm just gonna go ahead and set them down in there where they go and that'll be it because once this is together it's pretty solid and uh, I, I can have a little flexible uh, flexibility in it for when I go to put it on them tracks so I don't think this will be glued down in the same way with the larger bridge I don't think I'm gonna glue it down I'll just set it on there all right so that's where I'm at um, I'm gonna take a break here get this video uh, uploaded and, and get my video all ready to go today Saturday I gotta get this ready to be uploaded tomorrow so I'm, I'm going to stop where I'm at, let all this stuff set up, all this glue, all these rails. I want them to set overnight because those are fragile. I had to come back to these oh, about four or five times and look down the side and I had to keep tweaking it, keep moving them because they, they had a tendency to want to either bend in or bend out on their own and I had to keep messing with them until I got to the point where that glue was holding them pretty good so I know none of this is supposed to go on yet but I gotta get it on there I gotta get it painted I can't get this all together and then come along like I said jump up to step 21 and find out oh well now I gotta do all this so and, and I also got a bunch of boxes that gotta go on here So I gotta get all that stuff on there I already got them painted so that's no big deal. I'll just get them glued down on there. But uh, 
Yeah, it's just coming together. Haven't had a much much time spent down here. I've been doing a lot of work out in the yard. You see in that tree that we had to take down. Well, I spent two days burning up a bunch of little wood and stuff from it, trying to clean everything up. People coming over wanting some of that firewood. Got rid of all that. So we're getting there. Uh, next week this ought to all be painted and done. Get my decals on there. I got to find out what side they go on. I think the decals go on on the outside of all this. I don't think any decals go on the inside. I'll have to check that. Okay, so that's where I'm at. That'll be about the end of this video, I think. This is enough. And uh, we'll see you later.